So basically, what we're going to be doing today is going over the basic tools in Photoshop. This is a stock image of an eye I found on internet, Google. This is the move tool. Pretty self-explanatory, just moves the picture around. Alright, next is the rectangular select tool. It selects rectangle. It's quite basic. And these are just the simple select tools that we're going to be going over first. So, just simple stuff. Then there's the elliptical select tool. Again, elliptical means circle. It's selecting a circle. Very simple. Now, these aren't really used much. I don't remember the name of them, but they're basically just, you select a straight line of one pixel. I don't see much use for this unless you're making a schematic, but other than that, I'm not quite sure what you use it for. Then there's the lasso tool. This lets you free select stuff. It's pretty simple. It's really annoying to use sometimes, though. I don't like using the lasso tool. It annoys me. Alright, next is the polygon lasso select tool. Basically, you can just click, 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 and then you can select many different shapes. And to, once you're done making your selection, you want to double click to select it. Alright, next is the Magnetic Polygon Select Tool. Basically, it's just like a smart select tool. It kind of curves along with your cursor. It's like combining the Polygon Select Tool and the Lasso Tool. It's rather weird. I'm not really quite sure how to use it, so... I tend not to use those kind of tools anyway. But might as well go over them in this video. Alright, this is probably my favorite selecting tool. It's the quick select tool. It just selects uh, any of the pixels that are very similar. Again, it's one of my favorite tools. It's very fun to use. And this is just me having fun with the select tool, so. I guess that's how you deselect. You can go to select, deselect, or you can press the control D. This is magic wand, it selects everything on the image that is one color. It's really, I don't use it that much, but it can be helpful in some photos. Because sometimes it's black and white, and you just want to select the white parts, or sometimes you just want to select the black parts, and sometimes it's colored images too, but much more uh, glitchy. This is the crop tool. Basically you select an area and press enter or the little check mark up at the top right and it will make it the size of the crop. Alright, next is the slice tool. I really don't know what these are used for. <laughs> yeah, so when I figure out I'll make a tutorial on them. So. I really don't know what to use them for. Hmm. Yeah. Alright, this is the color select tool, which is what I call it. Don't really know what it's actually called, but I call it the color select tool. Basically, Depending on which version of Photoshop you have, the little circle will come up and it shows you what color you're selecting and which color you already have. So basically, it lets you choose the colors over here, where your cursor is on the image. It's very useful. I use it in almost every image I use. So, And this just basically lets you select multiple things and have them on record inside that little pop-out window. It's useful, but you only have four things, so you can't really do much with it, but it's helpful. Alright, next 
is the ruler tool. It's you measure how many pixels, like anything on your image could be. It could be like somebody's hand, somebody's head, the iris of the eye, anything. This is the note tool, basically lets you put a note on the image, so say you're like working on a photo for school, which is what course I'm taking, lets you put a note so the teacher can read the note, so that like, they can help you with something if they, if you like, you can write like, hey, how do you like, resize the image or something, and then they said so they can answer your question on the note itself, you can just check your file. You can also use this to say, send it to a friend with the note on it and say like what do you think of this and then they can write a comment to you so it can be used in many ways but yeah. Next is the healing tool. Well, first of all, let me clear this. Alright, now the healing tool. Now, this is a very destructive tool. It only works sometimes. So I'm going to put like a little black dot here with the paintbrush tool. Paintbrush tool is another destructive tool. But just going to put a basic dot there. After I change the black, there we go. Put a dot. Alright, there's the dot. Now you go to the heal tool and click on it, and voila, it's gone. It doesn't erase it, but it checks like everything around it, all the pixels around it, the color they are, and it tries to make it look good. See, like I did with the iris, it doesn't always work very well. So, but for like skin stuff, it works pretty well, and many textures, it works good too. Right, this is the healing patch tool. Basically, to Go to this part that you want to select to heal, hold an alt and click, and I'll make what selection you wanted to use to like make a relative to what you're gonna heal. So basically this is like the other healer tool, but it doesn't detect what's around it, it detects what you selected with the alt click. So a little less useful but can help in some situations. Patch tool, just weird. It lets you kinda select something and patch it with a texture. Like that. This makes a single, well, not a single, but it fills in what you're selected with the texture that you select. And that's just me showing you the entire texture. Next is the, uh, what is this called? That is red eye removal, and now we're on the paintbrush. Paintbrush is very destructive. It basically just lets you color over the image. Same with the pencil. Pencil's just a little bit thinner. And neater, technically. But this is the color difference tool. A little strange. Don't really know what I would use it for, but... Yeah. Alright, this is the mixer brush, basically just takes the pixels around it and then mixes them together. Yet again, another strange tool, but can be used in many ways. Next we have the stamp tool. Again, you have to hold an alt, and you can make a selection, like that, and then when you click, it'll stamp it wherever you put.
it's the pattern stamp tool. It stamps the pattern. It's like the patch tool, but you can just stamp it in instead. Alright, next we have the history brush tool. This basically restores the image to its default thing from when you originally put it in. I guess you'll see I'll go over the pupil there and I'll restore it back to normal. And the art history brush basically jumbles everything together. Yeah. yeah another very destructive tool. Although if you use it right, it looks cool. Like so. Next we have the eraser tool. It does exactly what it says. Erases. Very destructive yet again, but yeah, it's used a lot. Uh, next we have the ma actually, hold on. What is this? This is the background eraser tool. This it just erases the background. It erases to the background, so it erases all the layers. This is the magic eraser tool. It does the same thing as the magic wand, but it erases it instead of selecting it. Extremely destructive. Next we have the paint can tool. It paints in whatever color or selection you have a single color. Alright, next we have the gradient tool. It just fills it in with a gradient which is a colored shape or form. There's many different things like the radial is this one. And then this one, I can never remember the name of it, but it's that. And then there's a linear and then there's a star. This is the blur tool. It just blurs the image. Very self-explanatory. This is a very good example, I do it on the eye itself. Next is the sharpen tool, it does the opposite of the blur tool, it sharpens the image. Of course if you over sharpen an image it does not look normal. Alright, next is the smudge tool, it lets you smudge stuff. Alright, next, well, smudge. Next will be the dodge tool, which makes things lighter. There you go. Much brighter, as you can tell. What I'm doing there is just going back instead of pressing undo a bunch of times. And this is the burn tool, does the complete opposite of the dodge tool, and it makes it darker. There we go. And next we have the sponge tool, which just kind of sponges the image, makes it a little bit more opaque. And if you use it too much, it makes it see-through. And it also can make it black and white, as I did there. Next we have the pen tool. This is basically lets you draw figures. It's I can see people using it for schematics, but I don't see too much use for it in any other way. Basically this is just me drawing stuff with the this is a different tool, it's a shape tool, it lets you make shapes. Again for the schematics and stuff. Very simple, but very useful. Alright, next we have the text tool. Basically, you click inside the image and it lets you type. Like so. Hello. And...
you press the little check mark at the top to stop typing, by the way. Next, we have the path selection tool. And those are just different ways to type. It's a vertical path finding. This is a path selection tool and mask path selection tool. Basically, you can make a path and then you can select the path with the map, with the path selecting tool. There's just the shapes. That's a hand tool. It's not really used. This is the magnify tool. Basically, let's you zoom in and out. If you right click with it, you can fit it to screen and fit it to pixels as well. So basically, that was the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace out.